Babco Energies announced that BlackRock, the global asset manager, has acquired a minority ownership stake in the Saudi Bahrain pipeline company. This transaction represents Babco Energies' first asset monetization and reflects BlackRock's commitment to investing in Bahrain. The signing ceremony was attended by the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of Babco Energies, Azana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Bar. Bindana, Bobco Energies Group CEO Mark Thomas, alongside senior representatives from Bobco Energies and BlackRock, including the head of EMEA for Diversified Infrastructure at BlackRock, Edward Winter, and Managing Director of BlackRock Middle East, Yazid Limbarak. His Highness Sheikh Nasser emphasized the importance of attracting foreign direct investments and achieving strategic partnerships with leading international partners in various sectors. His Highness also emphasized the importance of partnerships as they contribute to boosting the national economy and support the comprehensive development process led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness noted that the investment and strategic partnership with BlackRock reflects the attractiveness of Bahrain and Babco Energy's innovative model for managing its assets and operations in line with Bahrain's energy sector transformation plans and programs and in line with national efforts to ensure energy security. For his part, Babco Energy's Group CEO said that Babco strives to maximize value across its investment portfolio and it's implementing a range of projects and initiatives that support comprehensive national development. The head of EMEA at BlackRock expressed pleasure to partner with Babco Energies as it gives investors exposure to a critical contracted infrastructure asset. It also supports the modernization of a strategic asset for Bahrain as it seeks to achieve its decarbonization goals. The managing director of BlackRock Middle East said that BlackRock focuses on identifying and investing in infrastructure assets that offer attractive risk-adjusted returns across the Middle East. The Saudi Bahrain pipeline company owns a portion of the 112-kilometer pipeline supplying crude oil from Saudi Aramco to Babco Refining. Under the terms of the transaction, the BlackRock Infrastructure Fund has taken a minority stake in company. The proceeds from this transaction will be used for Babco Energy's capital to expand its business and drive the modernization of its operations to support decarbonization programs. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, received the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Elders, Muhammad Abdul Salam, who conveyed the greetings of the Grand Imam of Al Azhar Sharif and President of the Muslim Council of Elders, Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib. Within the framework of cooperation between the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Al Azhar Sharif, and the Muslim Council of Elders, Sheikh Abdurrahman discussed with the Secretary General the latest developments and preparations for the intra Muslim Dialogue Conference to be held in Bahrain early next year under the patronage of His Majesty the King, which follows the invitation issued by the Grand Imam at Bahrain Dialogue Forum. The two sides stressed the necessity of this dialogue in emphasizing the agreement in the field of belief, though the, through the values and considering that all Muslims are one nation. They affirmed the determination and strategic partnership with major Islamic institutions around the world to strengthen unity among Muslims supporting the foundations of constructive coexistence, consolidating authentic Islamic values and confronting extraneous and destructive ideas and approaches and all forms of extremism, racism, sectarianism and discrimination. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Civil Defence Council chaired the Council's meeting, which was attended by the Ministers of Foreign Affairs, Municipalities and Agricultural Affairs, Oil and Environment, Transportation and Telecommunications, Works, Electricity and Water Affairs, Health, Housing and Urban Planning, Information Industry and Commerce, and Chief of Public Security and Under Secretary of the Ministry of Finance. The Minister of Interior noted that the meeting aims to strengthen civil protection and public safety measures. The meeting included a briefing on the achievements of the National Civil Emergency Management Committee over the past three months. These achievements included working on risk management and national preparedness, setting a clear timeless for 
establishing a sustaining and new monitoring stations to measure radiation spreading up Gulfide connectivity, responding to civil health emergencies, preparing a water security plan, issuing guidelines for water consumption during emergencies, preparing a strategic medicine distribution plan, and enhancing industrial cooperation in emergency situations. The minister commended the efforts of the chairman and members of the committee for their role in building national capabilities for managing civil incidents and emergencies. He highlighted the importance of continuing to update the National Risk Register coinciding with the ongoing security challenges. He also pointed out the importance of establishing and equipping a national center for managing civil emergencies and preparing a national training program that involves the relevant risk management entities to ensure flexibility, efficiency and the development of emergency preparedness and recovery teams. The council was briefed on the mechanism for managing national risks, which includes identifying key national risks, developing a risk register and strategic capability for emergency management and early warning, and enhancing the work of response agencies. It also covers prevention policies and programs, preparedness capabilities, plans, technology and equipment, building readiness and support during crisis, and cooperation with risk and crisis management teams. The Minister of Interior emphasized the need to improve the national risk management system, including the information transfer mechanism, control the capabilities of response agencies, decision-making mechanisms during crisis and field response. He noted that building an advanced national system to reduce disaster risks requires continuous efforts to raise general readiness, increase efficiency and improve the ability to plan and prepare for all types of risks. The minister then thanked the members for for their role in developing cooperation and coordination mechanisms aimed at enhancing preventative measures for civil protection, assessing the level of preparedness to face potential risks and increasing safety for all citizens and residents. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dana, led the Bahrain's delegation at the 26th meeting of the GCC Environment Ministers held in Doha, Qatar. The minister reaffirmed Bahrain's commitment to enhancing collaboration and alignment of environmental visions within the GCC, acknowledging the constructive decisions made by the Environment Ministers that advance sustainable developments at both regional and international levels. He emphasized the importance of the topics discussed at the meeting, including the GCC's environmental strategies and additional issues that promote environmental cooperation and support efforts to preserve ecosystems, biodiversity and natural resources while reducing pollution. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Yasser Hamidan, and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Bahrain Real Estate Investments Company, Idama Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, signed a framework in the fields of renewable energy and energy efficiency of all kinds. The framework signed between the two parties includes the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs, providing technical support and advice to Idama on applications for integrating renewable energy and energy efficiency solutions in the company's facilities and buildings. On this occasion, Hamidan affirmed that the framework comes within the efforts of the ministry to implement renewable energy and energy efficiency plan for Bahrain. It also reflects Idama's desire to benefit from renewable energy and improve the energy efficiency as part of the national efforts made to achieve sustainability in energy resources. Idama's chairman of the board of directors expressed thanks and appreciation to Hamidan and all employees of the ministry for their efforts in continuing to achieve the goals of renewable energy and energy efficiency plans for Bahrain. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that its consular authentication office in Rafah and the Diplomat Tower have joined the national appointment system, the Mawaid app launched by the Information and E-Government Authority. This app serves as a unified platform for booking appointments at the government service centers requiring in-person visits. The Undersecretary for Consular and Administrative Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Isa Nasr Naimi, highlighted that this move is part of the Ministry's ongoing efforts to enhance 
enhance e-services and provide the best service in line with the Government Action Plan 2023-26. to He emphasized the importance of continuing to offer efficient e-services that reduce waiting times through the digitalization of available services. Recreational and sporting activities play an important role in society, improving the health of individuals and promoting the development of inclusive societies. Bahrain has a wide range of sporting activities and facilities that enable citizens and residents to live healthy and active lifestyles. Bahrain's Squad Academy allows amateurs to practice football in a professional and fun environment. Squad Academy focuses on developing the personalities of players from a social point of view by by strengthening the spirit of one team according to special training plans and a suitable environment. It also seeks to form a group of players to establish a new local club that will compete for local cups.